Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. We're talking about the effort to bring Major League Baseball to Portland. Welcome once again to Mike Barrett with the Portland Diamond Project. Once again, it's great to have you here. No, thanks for having me. In the first segment, we were talking about possible locations, and I want to talk about another site that you've talked about, the ESCO site in Northwest Industrial Portland. There's a really strong neighborhood association there, mm -hmm. the Northwest District Association that we've heard is opposed to big developments and traffic. They want to protect the neighborhood. That's also a pretty big obstacle. Where are you on that? Well, we have offered on ESCO. I think that went public, and, and they've been terrific to work with. The, the cool part of the ESCO site is that is the original site of the Vaughn Street Ballpark, as you mentioned, back in 1901. Uh, the history is fantastic. Two rail line owners, Swigert and Fuller, um, they were streetcar owners and competitors, and they built this ballpark to be what they said at the time, the heartbeat of the city, and to drive turnstiles and drive ridership, and it did. Uh, and it was there, and, and there were games there until 1956 when there was a fire. So the you know baseball is romantic at its heart anyway, and this site really got us stirred early and on. And the street line, I think, is going to be expanded down to Montgomery mm -hmm. too, so that mm -hmm. would be advantageous. But what does the neighborhood association say? Um, we haven't we haven't. Heard, I mean, I know what you said. They are a strong neighborhood association. We would hope this would be something that, if you look at what a, it was a foundry that was there and an industrial site. Um, I would think a ballpark would play nicely there, but I also, we understand and we're sensitive to all concerns of, of to and neighbors as well. And what about Terminal 2? Because that's going to require a lot of infrastructure, transportation to get there. Wouldn't mm -hmm. it, to get to the waterfront? There's not really tra mass transit that goes there. No. So that would be a big investment where you might be asking for public money if it's that site. That site is unbelievable in terms of, when you look at that site, we've toured it a couple of times and walked the ground, and the Port of Portland is fantastic, and I think that when you walk out there and start to imagine a ballpark, and this is a, it's a huge development, as you can see, and when you're talking about 57 acres on the water, um, and you mentioned, you know, talking about Russell saying hitting balls into the river and whatnot. You know, this site is really, really cool. Um, How big an obstacle is that, though, trying to get the transportation to get folks out there? As much as the zoning would be in this case. Um, in industrial land is protected tightly as it should be. So, yeah, those that's are That's where you need the city council on board. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, you know, it would be a, a, a hurdle, um, but we know we're going to face a lot of them. So, And getting a team here. We talked about that a little bit. So you talk about the options are expansion team or mm -hmm. maybe the Oakland A's or Tampa Bay Rays. I had Commissioner Dan Salzman on Straight Talk last week. He sounded somewhat supportive that he'd be willing to maybe vote for a zoning change, but he wants to make sure Portland's not getting played, that mm -hmm. one of these teams doesn't use Portland as a bargaining chip to get a better deal in their city. Are you concerned about that? Well, we've said that in most of the meetings all along. We've said, if we are a stocking horse for you, then count us out. Um, and, and again, we haven't talked. I don't want people to misunderstand. We have not gone and talked to these teams. That's not our role. That would be uh, I, I mean, you know, we've been, that's why we've kept in close contact with Commissioner Manfred's office. It's not our role to go out and fish for teams. If we can help the commissioner stabilize some teams and stabilize some ballparks, both by leverage, as you mentioned, being a hammer in negotiations, so be it. And, but it's not our place to go and talk to these owners right now. What are, and, what are you hearing from the commissioner? Um, that he, well, the last time we talked face to face to it with him was in September. He was very appreciative at that time that we had not gone public and that we were doing things the right way. We knew that we were going to have to go public eventually, especially after we met face to face with the mayor because his calendar goes public April 15th, as everybody in the news business knows. So we knew we wouldn't likely get through that Sunday, which it was a Sunday this year, with that staying quiet. We didn't, but we were ready for it. So that's when we ended up going public. We did come out a little bit after the meeting with Manfred and at least kind of said, yes, there is a group that's uh, trying to accomplish this goal. Um, but, but yeah, we have a good communication with baseball. And um, we have people involved who are in baseball. Dale Murphy, uh, Larry Diamato, who's a longtime scout, Harold Reynolds uh, from Corvallis, who played in the majors, was an all-star with the Mariners. These guys have been great in terms of advising us. Um, and now, of course, we have Russell and Sierra in as well. So that's well, what do you terrific. think a stadium is going to look like? One you envision. What do you envision? Well, we know that there were some renderings that, that leaked to the media a while back. I will say that those were very early renderings. So I've had people come up and say, I love the ballpark, but change this. And I always have to say that was one rendering of 100 that we have. And the renderings and the ballpark design changes site so to site. So retractable roof? Retractable roof is what we feel is necessary. Real turf? Real turf. 
Yes. Sustainable. It's the grass seed capital yeah, of the world. Yeah. How are we going to throw down artificial? <laughs> Sustainable, walkable, iconic yes. Portland design. Yes, exactly. And even if you're talking about um, a waterfront ballpark, which would be tremendous, um, in other ways, you know, the city has this beautiful river that runs through it, and there aren't that many activation points to get to the river. I think a ballpark could make a big difference in that, and not only making the river accessible, but you talk about water taxis, parking on one side of the river, shooting across to the other to watch a ball game. There's so many things we've discussed. Marina, um, we know these things are all challenges, but they're, they're great to dream about. What is the total price tag that you look at? What's the number for everything? It sounds like at this point, um, I mean, it's a it's a moving number, of course, but you you were close. Three I think billion. one point two billion for the ballpark and the and the development. Um, and I will say that you can do it a lot cheaper if you don't have a roof. And we did the studies on that. Portland, believe it or not, is sixth has the sixth least rainfall during the MLB season of any MLB team. But we know it rains in April. We know it rains in October. So for game certainty and to be a regional draw, which we will be, a family from Bend or the coast or from Eugene or Medford or Longview or anywhere that, you know, in our area that wants to come, we want to make sure the game, if it's in, if it's in April, we don't have a three-game weekend series that's rained out. But I will say this, the roof idea is not something that's been done in the country before. It's So that's the stadium. What about everything else? What's the total price tag? The ancillary uh, development, um, I don't have those numbers. I know that our master uh, planners and developers do, and that's that's more of How much does the team cost? Um, it depends on if it's an expansion or, a, or an existing team. But you're, you're again, you are right in, in, get, in talking about the billion mm -hmm. number. What's the soonest that we could see a team here in Portland? If, if, all went, if all went well and when I lay in bed at night and kind of imagine when this could be, I think 2022 is probably, uh, it takes about three years to build a ballpark. And so if, if you run down these lines of team and ballpark, kind of sync everything together, that's perhaps optimistic, but we've been optimistic since we started this journey. So Mike, about 20 seconds left. Can you give us a final thought to leave our viewers with? Final thought is, we love the ideas. We love the ideas from fans. We love that you've reached out to us at PortlandDiamondProject.com. Thank you for the questions. Keep it rolling. And if you believe in this, keep asking for ways that you can help because the groundswell and the support from fans is vital to getting this done. Mike Barrett, thank you for joining us here from the Portland Diamond Project. Good luck bringing baseball to Portland. We'd like to talk to you in the future. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Join me when my guest is Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley. We'll see you then. Have a great week.